section two is looking at the state government itself. All right, it's organized. We're going to look at the organization, and then we're going to look at each of the different um, branches within the state government itself and also the finances and services that the state government provides. So state governments are divided and balanced just like our federal government. It has a state legislator with a bicameral legislative body and stuff for Nebraska. They only have a unicameral. Um, there's a state executive like our federal government which is headed by the governor itself, kind of like the president. And there was also a state judiciary or state or judiciary branch of government which handles all your trial, state trial courts and appeals. Um, very similar to our United States our United States federal government as well. Okay, so let's look at each one of these individually. State legislative branch, there are two types. One type is citizenship legislator, another is professional. Citizen, citizen legislator is one where it's a part-time gig. The members who are elected into the, the state legislative body um, only work um, once for a, short, a couple months out of every other year compared to a professional legislator is full time, something you do throughout the year. You work, you're in session most of the year and you get paid differently based on being part time or full time. How they work, um, they work very similar to our federal government. They write laws, that's some of the powers, they write laws and, the key, and have, they have some checks on the other branch of government, some powers of checks to make sure that they're not overstepping the boundaries. It's organized similar to the US Congress where there's leadership positions, a majority of minority leaders, and they do a lot of the work in committees. The process of a bill becoming a law in your states, very similar to the U.S. Con the U.S. Congress does. Uh, you, they can introduce a bill that goes to a committee. The committee then passes it. It goes onto the floor for debate. The floor passes it, then becomes law, or that they vote on it, and then becomes law. Um, there are two chambers, like I said, in every state except for one, so they have to go through one chamber and pass through the other chamber before it eventually go on to the, the governor to become the law itself. So the process is very similar to the federal government. All right, state, state executive branch, which is headed by our governor. Um, their role is to enforce the laws that are passed by our state um, legislative body. They set the agenda and they promote the state. They promote the state by basically cheerleading for businesses or other type of industries to come to their state to diversify and raise revenue of some form. Um, so that's one way they promote the state, try to drum up business. They have some of the same, very similar powers to the president by appointing, setting the budget or creating the budget. They are in charge of the National Guard. They can veto laws and they can line item veto law. And line item veto is where they can, the governor can veto a section, not the entirety of the, of the law itself, but just a section of the law um, Something that the President of the United States does not have has been deemed unconstitutional by the Supreme Court for the, for the President to do, but governors do have that option of line out and veto. And executive clemency is granting pardons to um, people or, or, uh, or not, um, um, or reprise or basically shorten someone's sentence. So these are some of the powers that are granted to the, the governor. Qualifications similar to the president, U.S. citizen, state resident, 30 plus years old. Terms are the same. The salaries are from 70000 to 200, 206000 And some other offices within the executive branch is your lieutenant governor, which is similar to you know, a vice president that we have in the federal level. Secretary of State, which is basically in charge of running elections and keeping records of the state. And your attorney general is another elected official under the, in the executive branch where it's the state's top attorney. Um, for the state in case they are in need of legal advice or being sued. Our state judicial branch, um, again, is very similar to our federal government. They have trial courts and appeal courts, just like on the federal side. Um, your municipal courts are courts that are, are where you are going to be charged with, for a, a crime that you did something, you broke a law within the city limits. District courts may maybe in the county area, um, outside of a city, you would begin your, your trial, your case would start in one of these type of courts. If you wanted to appeal, you can, you can appeal your case. Some states have a intermediate appeals court, a, a basically a court that's between the, the trial courts and the Supreme Court, the state Supreme Court. Nevada does not. Um, there's only one appeal court, and that's the state Supreme Court. But the state Supreme Court is basically their... Their function is, any appellate court really, their function is to not rehear the case, but 
determine whether the lower court correctly interpreted the, the law or the state law and applied it to the, the case itself. Uh, most often, the determination of the, of the appeals court, I'm sorry, yeah, the appeals court is final, though some cases do make their way all the way up to like um, the U.S. Supreme Court, maybe. Uh, very rarely, though. Um, okay, selection of judges. There are a couple ways they can be selected. One um, is through appointment. Um, judges in state courts may be either elected or appointed, or they could be elected, appointed, or it's called the Missouri Plan. Um, states where judges are appointed, the governor or the legislator, state legislator, uh, make a judicial appointment. And when they're and when making their appointments, they usually appoint judges who are members of their own party. In states where judges are elected, their names go on a ballot during an election. Um, this may seem fair, but uh, voter turnout is very low for judges because people don't really know how how to vote on them. Um, some are partisan, some are nonpartisan. State of Nevada is nonpartisan. I mean, they don't have to. T they don't have to declare a party when you see them on election, and um, usually don't. They don't face an opponent because no one really shows up in the first place. So they keep on getting. So it's hard to unseat them due to the fact that they're never being. Um, no one really votes for them. And then um, some states have what's called a Missouri plan, where it combines methods of election and appointment. Um, so the state bar would help come up with a list of potential judges. This list would then. This list is based on merit and qualifications, and these potential judges are then appointed by uh, the governor. And for the at the next ele election, usually a year later, the voters decide whether the judge should remain in office. If not, if they vote no, then it goes all over. You get a you get a list of names. The, the governor selects someone for the name, and they're in they're they are on the bench. All right, state services and finances. Um, some of the services that is provided by our states is paying for schools, Medicaid, which is for poor or um, disenfranchised people, Medicare is for the elderly, police. Our state police would be like the Nevada Highway Patrol, that's state police, and they also manage the land, manage state land, like state parks throughout the state. Um, so that's some of the services. The way they pay for these services is mainly through taxes, and you can see on this chart here where the majority of the taxes come from to the states. Sales tax and property tax are the biggest contributors to that, and there are other ones there. Um, but those mainly those are the two biggest contributors to our to the revenue for a state. Uh, some other ways they can do that they can generate is called is through fees like a highway toll, which we don't have here in Nevada, or tuitions at state colleges. Um, those are some other ways they get some fees through revenue through fees. They can, the federal government can provide grants to states. Some grants are some are very specific to specific programs, and some are very general. Those are called block grants. And states can borrow money by selling bonds. Um, people buy state bonds, at, and after a time, they receive their money back with interest. And also, some states may run a lottery um, to raise as much as two to three percent of their total revenue in um, this way. The state budgets, unlike the U.S. government. They, many of them require them to be balanced, meaning they can't spend more than they make. Um, this can make it tough for uh, government programs, especially in tough times. A lot of programs get cut um, due to the, the low um, resources coming in or revenue coming into these states.